Hi, and welcome to today's daily response video. I'm Zara, creative producer for People Make It Work, and today I'm joined by our associate, Hannah Cornick. How are you, Hannah? I'm good, thank you. Nice to see you. Really nice to see you. We've got quite a bright day today. It's hotting up out there. Um, Hannah, could you start by giving us um, a snapshot of your career so far? Um, and a, yeah, a little bit of an insight into your background. Okay, so um, my career has been spent um, almost exclusively in broadcast. So I started as a journalist in radio and moved into factual TV, um, where I was until uh, just a couple of years ago. Um, I spent the majority of my career working at the BBC. And one of the best things about that is that as an employer, they have um, a big a high level of investment in developing their staff. So I was able to work um, not just as a programme maker, but in the BBC's academy. Um, and where I was trained as an executive coach and also helped design and deliver leadership training. So that, that's been my working life really and um, in the last two or three years since I left the BBC I've been working in the training and development space um, both for in the creative industries and outside with individuals and with organisations. Okay and um, could you from your experience give us an idea of, you know, in the last nine weeks um, where we have been in isolation, I'd love to know what you've been thinking about, what's been arising for you. Um, yeah, can you give us an insight into that? Yeah. God, I can't believe it's been nine weeks actually. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a bit scary when you kind of add it up. Um, so I've had, um, it's been a really interesting time. It's been very busy. Uh, Initially, I was scooped up into a really frantic um, design and delivery of a free training program for freelancers <clears throat> because in the um, film and TV world, 95% of the workforce are freelance. And according to the film and TV charity, 83% of that 95% of freelancers weren't working or still aren't working. So it's had a devastating impact on this particular sector of the creative industries. And I was caught up in designing and delivering um, what is still ongoing, a, a platform for six, seven hours worth of training and, and sort of access all areas to um, masterclasses, um, cultural leaders within that sector for anyone who could sign up and get a spot um, mm -hmm. thanks to Zoom. So that was really, really busy. Um, but what it really highlighted for me was that um, since I moved away from programme making, um, and you could argue, depending on your perspective, whilst also making programmes, my role um, has very much been about facilitating other people's creative vision. So as a series producer, which was my role um, in TV, you are doing exactly that. You are have oversight of a series. It could be a series of 20 episodes or a series of four, but you have oversight of that and you're putting a team together to deliver that creative vision <clears throat> rather than actually being particularly in touch with, with my own creativity. Yeah. What lockdown has done I think for most of us is it's kind of narrowed our horizons as opposed to broaden them and, and really focused in on that sort of desire to have a sense of control or mastery over your own destiny at this time so for me what that's meant is I've become more and more focused on that facilitative role and less and less connected to the part of me that is also a creative soul. Um, and, um, and I've been aware of that as I talk to lots of other people working in the industry because it's a, it's a human response to a situation that we're in. And often our creativity is inspired by the stimulus around us and we're in a, in a much less stimulating environment, most of us at the mm -hmm. moment. And I'm working um, and living in a house with, um, with my family and I've got um, a husband who has used this time really prolifically to arrange endless songs <laughs> and record himself singing them and filming himself singing them and they've all been brilliantly either entertaining or moving and then at the other end of the spectrum my son who's um at doing a music degree feeling really intimidated by what he's seeing on instagram particularly around um his peer group who are all kind of going crazy with their creativity because there's this sort of democratization of platforms um yeah. out there and so you've got one extreme to the other and in that facilitative role, I'm aware of my 
uh, work as a parent really to support my child to to be braver and as I do that um, and coming up with endless ideas for him why don't you just try this one thing or that one thing really challenging myself to do the same and um, and just to start small and I and to stay connected with things that feel really manageable so I actually got to a place where I had to look up the dictionary definition of creativity because I felt like I completely lost touch with what it meant to be creative and to play mm -hmm. and I was reminded of that Picasso quote about the fact that you spend your whole life trying to be a child again and um and when I looked up uh, creative you know it talks about original ideas which are intimidating because um, because I don't feel like I've got any but it talks about just imagination and of course play is about enjoying an exercise for the sake of the exercise so trying to bring those two things together and and start to try and think about things that feel creative and playful within the four walls these four walls of my house and my run every day Yes, and um, you have to tell us what you've been yeah, playing with, creating. It's been really interesting. So some of it's just been about challenging myself to small things, literally like um, reading a different part of the newspaper um, and even really silly things like looking at how our newspaper page is laid out and, and trying to, by engaging with that, think about different things like the photographs that or the adverts and the ways that things are illustrated through to um those challenges on facebook about posting your 10 books or your 10 albums or your 10 pictures of your kids or whatever it is and and other things like that i suppose are a little bit more um predictable but nonetheless valuable to set a challenge to myself to post a picture on Instagram every day of something where you can't quite see what it is so whether that's about a flower or that I've taken a photograph of on my run that's taken from a different angle that doesn't look like a flower. So, that, But it's a very specific, clear challenge. So it doesn't become this huge thing of do a huge thing, make a huge thing that has to be really uh, you know, groundbreaking or impressive and, and I'm really proud of it. Because I'm trying to think of things that are really small and therefore manageable, then I feel like I can achieve something and I don't feel like I've failed. Yeah. So it's been about setting and saying the same, having the same conversations with my son. And of course it doesn't take much for a 19 year old who's got a passion for music to, to find his feet again and just get off yeah. and start doing it. But I think the things I'm, I'm just aware of is how easy it is to lose sight of that yeah. when your world has shrunk. Yeah. So it's a little bit like the artist's way reduced. <laughs> I like it. So, um, yeah, so even little, even things like we've taken, I've stripped a wall in my house and I've taken all the pictures off the wall. And it's even things like thinking, what would I put back on that wall? Like, where is my art in my house? And should I reorganise it all to think about, I want to look at the things in a different way, yeah. you know? I, I love some home curation. Yes, exactly. Or watching something on TV that I wouldn't normally watch. So looking on iPlayer and looking at BBC Four or BBC Three and thinking I'm just gonna, even sometimes it's just like, the thing I love about BBC Three is that there's no, because it's an online um, channel, everything is whatever length it is. So there are things on BBC Three that are 11 minutes or 22 minutes or whatever it is, they aren't scheduled for slots. Yeah. So I think it's been about just challenging my, challenging what I, my stimulus really and then thinking about what I do with that yeah. um, in a very small incremental way um, at a time when I think there's a really high risk of, of just becoming going down a bit of a rabbit hole yeah well it helps you be explorative and to look yeah. at things in different ways and what I really love about it is it's like sheer enjoyment it's it's for pure fun yeah um to close can you set us a challenge? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. What's been your well, fave? I think that uh, it's really helpful to try and think of something in a week so that you give yourself five or seven days to, to achieve your thing. So you can't just give up on day one. You have to kind of keep going. I also think it's important that there is some sort of audience that you share it with because then you are accountable. Okay. So whether that's social media or even just the people you're living with. And, um, and I think that my challenge, I'm thinking crazily wildly now I'm on the spot. So I, I kind of think of my phone because it's so easy and everyone's got a phone, but it might be going old school 
the notebook and pen. But I would say the challenge is that every day you create one image through either a pen or a phone that um, that 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 sums up the emotion of the day why don't we say that so that it's a connection so it's the emotion of the day whether that be frustration or joy or depression or despair or excitement or potential that you just find one image you create one image and you share that in, on one platform without any explanation what i love about that facebook thing of like your album covers the whole thing that says just the cover, no explanation. So it's literally just that. You don't have to say anything about it. It's just, just, just pop it out there. Create the image, stick it on a platform somewhere, even if that platform is your kitchen table with your family looking at it, or a photograph you take of a picture you drew and you send to a mate in New Zealand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's it. Amazing. I am totally going to do that. And I hope that more of our viewers and listeners are too. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Zara. Bye.